And this is something that I always try to remember as a pastor. Over, I told you, I've been a, I'm a young man, but I've been, a, I've been pastoring for 17 years. And I've had several close encounter, encounters where I almost missed church. I, had, I, rem- I remember one time there was a, this flu. It was the worst kind where I had the sh- shivers and I was so sick. And I would pray and I would have fever, but then I would pray. And when I go to church, I, maybe it was adrenaline, but I think it was the Holy Spirit. But I would have energy and I would lead two services. But then immediately after the second service, I'm, I would almost faint, but I never missed. I remember one time that I ate something wrong and I had diarrhea. I mean, I had diarrhea all night Saturday, all day Sunday morning. Even like during praise time, worship time, I, had to, I was going to the bathroom every 10, 15 minutes. But I said, God, I'm not going to miss church. And I prayed to God. And I, even during praise time, five minutes before I was to come up to pulpit to preach, I had to go. And I went to the bathroom during praise time because I had diarrhea. And I, I remember praying, God, please, I don't want to miss service. And I came back, and I'm so thankful. Somehow, some way, God allowed me to hold things in for the next 30, 35 minutes, and I never missed. You see, as a pastor, I realized that I have a freedom to do whatever I want to do. If I want, I have a freedom to say, this week, you know what? I had a very rough week. I've been sick, and I didn't really have time to prepare Sunday service. Or I could have simply said, you know, my throat is still, you know, still very rough and hoarse, and I might not make it, so maybe I'll just ask someone else to preach. But I realized that as a pastor, I've learned that I have a responsibility to be a model for my church members. To set an example, not just about church, but in every other things in life. As a father, and as a father, I know that I want to be a model too, also for, to my son. It means that I want to be a model to my son to show him what it means to be a man of God. I want to model for my son what it means to be a father and a good husband. I know that in this area, I still have long ways to go, but I want to try. But not only to my son, I also feel like I have a great responsibility to all the single and young men in this congregation to set an example of what it means to be a husband and to be a father. Again, believe me, there are far better fathers in this room than me. But the Bible tells us that as an older, not old, but older gentleman, that I have a responsibility to teach and to mentor and to be a model for younger men. And I take that responsibility very seriously. So whenever possible, I would oftentimes talk about my struggles in marriage not to show them that you know, that's what they should do, but to show them that you know, it's hard. It takes work, and you have to work through them. And for all of you in this room, all of you who work hard, who make sacrifices, and who give so faithfully each and every week, I want you to know that your work is not in vain. You may not think so, but people watch you. They look at you, and they remember. See, people have a strange way of storing things in their minds. And they only bring that back up when they need it, but they do bring it back up. So those rest of you, Remember and know that you too have a responsibility to be a model. Older men to teach younger men. Older women to teach younger women. The Bible tells us that we all have that responsibility. And I want to challenge all of you to live your lives as a model, as a super model, in fact. In showing others what it means to be a, a father, a mother, a husband, a wife, a Christian, a servant, a leader, and a worker. I want to close by sharing with you uh, an email that I received about a couple of years ago. And forgive me for sharing my life so much, but I feel like this is a good story to share. 
Again, this email was sent to me about two, weeks, two years ago from one of my past students. She's now graduated and going to college. It's hard to believe. She was a young girl. And she sent me an email about uh, one of her church members. See, her father is an associate pastor, but he's also a shepherd. He's a small group leader for singles ministry. And she, told me, and she sent me an email about this oppa, an uh, older brother that came to their family group who knew me. Maybe this email will explain. Okay. It starts out, it says, okay, try to think back. And again, Pastor Paul, okay, try to think back to about seven years ago. There was this 16, 17-year-old guy in the youth group named Hyunjun Kim. He had like blonde hair and earrings. Well, his big brother, Hee-jun, started coming to my parents' house church and changed so much that Hyun-jun, the guy that knew me, started coming too. They both had changed so much since they started coming to house church. Well, today I had to go to University of Houston for this flute camp thing, and he came to pick me up, and he started telling me these stories about you, referring to me, how you helped him when he was wandering everywhere, how you brought drugs from him that cost like $400 and tried to flush it down the toilet, burning it, etc. How you paid for how you paid for his winter retreat fee and how you prayed for him when he first experienced God. He said that because of his experience at this winter at the winter retreats and because of his memories of you, even when he dropped out of college and partied, he knew, the, he knew that feeling of being spiritually high. And he was like, dang, even though I didn't go to Seoul Baptist Church when Pastor Paul moved, uh, I'm still sad. When I read this me email, obviously it really encouraged me and it really blessed me. But it really blessed me the fact that the things that I did at the time, I never really did it thinking that I was going to be a model to someone. But I did it simply as an expression of love to help out a young man who was confused and he was going through a lot of problems. But, but the part about this email that really blessed me was that this young man, that he never forgot. And when he thought about what it means to be a Christian, he reflected upon me as a model. in evaluating and thinking about what it, meant, what it meant to be a Christian. And I want all of us to remember, it is important that we choose good models in our lives. But more importantly, let us remember, it is more important for us to be the good models. That is the freedom that God's given every one of us. Freedom to be a model. Amen? Amen? Amen means I agree. Amen? Amen. Let us pray.